Hello everyone, my name is Ashwin and welcome to part 8 of the Protopy Crash Course. In this video, we will learn how to make this drag and drop animation. As you see, the drop uh, area responds to the drag area. And then once you drop, you have this subtle nice animation. I'm going to repeat it. So you have this subtle nice animation to indicate that the drop is successful. And it drops, it responds only when you drop in the right area. So the source files for this video can be found along with the description and you can also check out designerx.io for a classroom experience of this course. So without any more talk, let's get started. So this is the sketch file that we'll be using and in the sketch file we have three artboards. Uh, we don't need all three artboards. Uh, we might need the first one and the third one for making our prototype interactions. And we have a drop area, which is a simple oval with a fill and a border. And we have our drop file, which is just a group, and I've called it drop file. And the backdrop is just a white background that's locked. And um, in the success animation, we have lines, which is this layer. And the lines are just like a simple um, line rotated on sketch. And then there is a success um, oval. so. Let me toggle off. So it's basically a check mark and no will. So now let's jump back into Protopy and we will import the sketch file using command I and I will select drag drop one, it's the first artboard. So once we have imported it, the first thing that we need to do is to make this drop file draggable. So as you see here, none of, none of the properties are applied as of now, but the moment you add a trigger for drag, all you need to do is just tap on drag and then you have to um, mention what action it needs to do on drag, which is to move along with the drag position. Now, when we drag, we want the layer to move and it's the drop file layer and we want it to move in all directions and we want to limit it to screen so that it doesn't flow beyond the screen. And once you see here, you see it gets restricted within the screen. Now we also have this ratio. It's basically a factor of how fast you drag. So let's say you, um, earlier we had it 100, which means it drags exactly along with the speed of the mouse. But if you want to make it say 200, then as you drag, it, it moves two times the speed at which you drag the object. So this can be a nice interaction if you want to have some sort of a parallax effect on top of a drag interaction. So now that we have our drag enabled, the next thing we need to do is to make our drop area respond to the position of the drag area. So to do that, I'm going to refresh and let me select my drop area. And the trigger that we need to use here is range. So with range, what you can define is if the range of the drag area, sorry, the drop file, um, we can select the X position. If the range of the X file, oh, let me make this 100 first. Okay, so this is the drop file and the X position, if it's between this point to this point, then we will scale the drop area. So that's the, how the logic would work. So what's this point? Uh, so this is the X axis, right? So let's first figure out what this point X value would correspond to. So once you tap on the drop file and you just drag it to this point, let's keep it at the middle point. You see here the X position is 82. And let's go and put that in our range. So this is 82 onwards and this will be until 82 and this is a closed loop and this is everything but this loop. So let's select this first because we need it from 82 to the end of X axis. So let's tap on 82 here and the end position would be about 196. So from 82 to 196 is the range and how what the response at this range we want it to be is to trigger the scale range of the drop area and let's scale by a factor of say 120. So um, let the easing options be as default and oh why did it, okay so it's already in the scale area plus let's um, 
change the origin to center so it scales in the center and 120 is a little too big so let's make it 105 oh, still too big okay let's scale to 105 maybe it's too small okay this looks fine all right uh, let's make it slightly bigger 110 yeah now as you notice the scaling starts before you even start dragging and this is because by default the layer is within the range that we are looking at so if you drag it outside this range and then refresh no scaling happens but when you bring it in the scale gets triggered but it doesn't um, scale back to its normal position when you leave the drag item right so to fix that all you need to do is copy this paste it and within 82 to 196 we scale in so now all you need to do is select the other one and say 82 196 um, and when it's outside of 82 and 196 what we wanted to do is to scale back to 100 percentage and as simple as that we have the drop area respond to the drag area now as you notice here this is responsive to the x value of the drop file right so if the x value changes the drop area responds but as you see here we could also bring the x value within this position and it would still respond but to make it exactly respond if it is within the file you need to use a combination of the x and the y position and it gets slightly complex when you do that so for this video i will not cover how to do this but i will leave the source file of this particular interaction along with the source files so you can go take a look at how i've implemented it and see how to do it yourself so for this tutorial what we will do is now to complete the drop animation and to do this all we need to do is we just need to use a trigger called touch up which means when you leave the trigger so this is touch down when you're holding it and when you leave it it's touch up so when you touch up on the drop file what we need to do is first let's check if the condition is satisfied and if the condition is say the x value it's the same range x value is greater than 82 and lesser than 196 so we can cascade x values so we can say x value is greater than 82 and the x value of the drop file is less than 196 so now if these conditions satisfy then all you need to do is first let's just reduce the opacity of the drop area and the drag area let's both um, let's reduce the opacity of both of them to zero so let's just make them disappear right so now when the drop area x is between the specified range and you drop it both of them disappears to zero and now all we need to do is animate the rest of the layers so let's import the the third artboard along with the, the same scene and i'm going to select command i and select drag drop 3 and import the third artboard and as you see here the lines and the success groups are imported right on top of the same layers so now one thing to note in protopi is you can import when you make a change to say artboard 3 and when you import them again and let's say you specify remove layers deleted in sketch it will not delete the rest of the layers that you imported from another artboard so it's one thing worth noting because if you were to delete something only in this layer and you import it and say remove layers deleted in sketch you will not lose the other files so it, it is specific to the artboard and protopi understands that these layers have been imported from a different artboard and when you say remove files deleted in sketch it means remove files deleted in this artboard so let's first move these two layers to the bottom of the artboard and uh, we have this backdrop we need the backdrop as well um, actually we can delete the backdrop we don't need it um, so now we have the success and the lines let's go ahead and make the opacity to zero which means the starting opacity is zero and we will increase the opacity as 
the condition gets satisfied. So once this is done, um, all we need to do is select the opacity of the lines and then the success and then what we need to do is make the opacity 100 and let's just push it a little ahead so that you have the animation like this. Now we can also add a scale animation to the, the center tick to make it a little more interesting and we can just select success. Now the next thing to do is to animate our lines. So for our lines we won't um, Let's actually delete the opacity because we don't need the opacity. We will instead make that, um, let me show you what animation we're trying to achieve. Yeah, so to get this animation, uh, let's select the lines layer. And as you see here, these are all our lines and this is the layer group that's outside. So we want this um, trim animation if, you, if you've used After Effects, that's the exact kind of animation that you want. So to achieve this, what we will do is to use the concept of a clipping mask to clip all the sublayers and to expand them. So the lines group itself is more than the contents inside. So first what we can do is just group them together to make an inside container. And this is the outside container and this is the inside container and the inside container has all the lines within it. So now what we can do is simply select the outside layer. The first thing you need to do is to make the origin center and let's also make the radius maximum so it has this circular reveal effect and the clipping mask is circular. You can't see it here but it essentially becomes a circular frame and once that is there let's go ahead and scale this down to this much. So I'm holding command and uh, I'm holding shift and option, not command, um, to scale it down. Oh, okay. So now as you see here, the lines just moved to this position. So first we need to remove all the constraints from it so that, um, let's remove all the constraints so that it remains in the center. So now if I scale this down to say this much, the So we need to keep the width and the height fixed for the inside one so that the width and the height does not change. And for the outside one, we don't need any constraints. So yeah, so this is what we are looking at. Let's scale it down and see the inside layer. Yeah. So now that we have the outside group scaled down, all we need to do is to scale the outside group. Um, I'm going to say scale and just keep it a little extra. And what I have to do is scale lines group. So let's make it to size and we will make it say 400 cross 400. So it will scale outside. So when you drop, as you see here, the animation works. Um, so let's see if 300 works, it should work. Yeah. Um, if you want to make it a little slower, just drag this out this much and then after the scale animation completes let's just make the opacity back to zero and we're going to take this and place it right after this animation oh it's too slow let's try this something wrong that looks more like what we want to do. So you can refine it more, feel, just get that right feel of animation until you're comfortable with. But this is um, all we needed to cover for this video. So in the next video, um, what we will try to do is to build a fully blown prototype that you might often require to build in your day-to-day -day, uh, life as a designer, if you're working for a company or if you're trying to uh, concept, build a concept of an app. Um, so we will use all the concepts that we learned before and also use more variables and conditional logics to and components and all the other concepts that we learned to build a complete end-to-end -end prototype in the next video.